Hello, Ronald. Hello, Herb. How are you? Oh, it, very nice. Thank you. And, and it's a, always a pleasure to see you. And I'm I'm glad to see that you're looking so well in this time of of quarantining ourselves. Well, as long as you have music, uh, you stay alive and well. That's what I think. I think that music is a is a wonderful treasure to have, and I look forward to uh, doing it again in person with you. And I just before we started, I was thinking about how long it is we've we have made music together. Um, well, I, I graduated back in 1982, and I think within the, the first few months, I was seeking employment, and you were kind enough to offer me a chance to play. I joined the Baltimore Chamber Orchestra, and uh, uh, we ended up collaborating with the Fari Requiem. That was the first thing I think I did with you. And uh, it was a few, just a few years later, it was 88, that I started my Bach Ensemble, and you've been my concertmaster for whenever I, whenever you are available i just love your leadership because you're such a um stylish and informed baroque player it's always just a real pleasure oh, well th thank you very much there's always more to learn every time you look at a piece and you re-examine it you see new things in it and uh, that's the marvel of it that even if there are certain rules about the style of how to play it there's always room for interpreting and growing through the music. So um, it, it never gets boring. It just gets more fascinating and interesting and deeper with time. When you think about, uh, gee whiz, we, we, I, we must have done 150 Bach pieces together, but, um, and, and many Handel pieces and so on. Is there one or two movements or, or pieces that are particular favorites for you? Um, well, you know, whenever I'm playing whatever given piece it is, that is my favorite piece at the moment. And with Bach, there's just so many great pieces of music, so many masterpieces. It would be hard to choose a favorite Brandenburg Concerto or a favorite Sonata, but um, one that I do keep coming back to is this um, uh, Sonata for Unaccompanied Violin. It's in A minor, and there's something about the third movement, the Andante, that has a, just a very natural flow about it and um, it feels like an inexorable heartbeat and you're just drawn in deeper and deeper. And you know, Bach's life was not an easy one and yet he always, because of his such a strong faith that he had, he always seemed to put a positive uh, spin on, on everything. Whatever tragedies and difficulties he went through, he always seemed to trust in his belief and um, just every note rings true. And this piece is certainly that way. It starts very contemplatively, it, it goes through its struggles, but in the end we uh, resolve in C major, which was Stravinsky's key for God uh, also, because Do was Dominum, and so, um, so so God, uh, Bach sticks with God through thick and thin, and uh, that that I just uh, that's a fabulous explanation. And I know we're going to get to hear you play that very movement after we finish chatting in just a moment. So I, I'm rather eagerly looking forward to that. Um, I, I, and your comment, I have to just commend you. Your your comment about what your favorite Bach piece is is it, I, I feel the same way. It, at the moment, I'm conducting a piece or or rehe rehearsing a piece and, and delving into it with the choir or the orchestra, um, there's nothing else. That, that's the be all and end all. It's all encompassing. And, um, and I think that's why I like working with you so much. I hear, because uh, people in our audience tell me afterwards how connected uh, we all seem together in, in, in the endeavor of making the music. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that I just, I just feel like that is, is a, a great privilege and and I um I love sharing it with the players like you and I love sharing it with the audience it's all just fabulous yeah it it always amazes me that this thing that appears lifeless on the page it's just ink on a page and yet you look at it and it just affects you so profoundly and then you you lift it off the page and put it into your hands and uh, with your guidance and with the choir and the other members of the orchestra and the audience also, you can feel their encouragement and their involvement in the music. It's like we're all just wrapped up in it because this one man of a couple hundred years ago just 
put some scribbles on a page, but it, it affects us profoundly. It's, it's a treasure. Um, and I've heard people say, actually, when I was a graduate student at Peabody, one of my good friends, Ray Sprinkle, um, was talking about some Bach, and he called it um, the greatest achievement of Western civilization. Mm -hmm. um, not just, you know, we tend to, I mean, I'm married to a, a, a doctor, and we all admire what science can do for us and, and the things it's done to make our lives more comfortable. But um, I, I'm so, I so treasure the art that, that, you know, makes the living something to just, you know, gives it reason, basically, mm -hmm. to some large extent. And uh, I also liked what you had to say about the dots on the page because, you know, we work with the professional instrumentalists, professional soloists, but what we call avocational singers, people who do it for the love of it, mm -hmm. but who don't get to spend as much time with it. And I have to constantly try to teach this idea that um, the little dots on the page, as you put it, mm -hmm. you know, those little dots are not the be all and end all, it's the making of the music and to mm -hmm. reach out to the people, you know, and look, look to them, play to them, sing to them, you know, let them share in the love that, you know, Bach put on the page. Um, and it's especially important to them, and it's something you do particularly well, is that you get them to understand the meaning behind the text and how the instruments reinforce that meaning, so that when we're with the choir, we feel that they, they know what we're doing and why we're doing it. And the audience, with the talks beforehand, get get a, a very strong sense of that. They have a, a guide with them what to be listening for. So this is part of the, um, the experience. You know, many times there are these pre-concert lectures and, you know, uh, then there's the music. But the way things are tied together, people are actively participating in the creation of the music because they understand much better what to be listening for. So um, those talks are really, really important and um, they just bring us all together. We're all on the same page, so to speak. Well, I appreciate you saying that because my goal in those little talks is not to say that Bach was born in 1685 and he died in 1750 and in 1723. You know, that I'm not, I mean, that's good to know. Don't get me wrong. Um, but more important to know is that this musical line um, has an intentionality beyond it that is meant to communicate something in addition to the text itself. Mm -hmm. and, and I try to do that in a, in, in a way that shares that with the audience mm -hmm. um, and, says to, and get, says to them, look, listen to the melodies for the melody's sake. They're beautiful. Listen to the architecture, you know, the, the fugues and the inventiveness. That's fascinating but if you wish there's this other dimension too that is it's quite real mm -hmm. and it is it makes it even a richer experience and so we that's the goal in those little beginning talks well um, it also reminds me of that um concept in gestalt which is that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts yes. so you can look at each individual thing but when it's all put together um, you, you realize how, how many, oops, you realize how many dimensions there are um, to what you're doing. Yeah. Well, um, we could just talk forever and ever, but you, you've got me so uh, uh, eager to hear you playing from this Bach um, solo sonata. Now, Bach wrote six of them. He wrote six Brandenburgs. He wrote six um, groups of six for a lot of different pieces. And um, you and I were talking just before we went on the air together about that number six. You, I, and I mentioned it here because you talked about Bach's spiritual side, or you alluded to it several times. Six in, in the Bible is the number of days in which God created heaven and earth, and on the seventh day rested. So for Bach, six becomes the number of creation. And so we have six of many wonderful, wonderful things. Um, and so we will, sh I thank you for agreeing to share something from the A minor um, violin sonata. Yes. And as you so interestingly pointed out, ending in C major, and there's a kind of symbolism in that. I appreciate that. Um, and now I'm going to sit back and, and listen to you, you play that for us. Thank you so much, Ronald. Thank you very much, Herb.